The beauty of college basketball is that a team that makes the list of the most disappointing teams in January may be able to ride the ship in time to win the national championship. Of course, that isn't always the case, but these teams need optimism, don't they? Some of the clubs on this list have simply been disappointed in terms of their expectations. But that's a part of the game. And if you're supposed to compete for a national championship or take a step forward and then fall short, you deserve to be called out. In the collegiate basketball season, these are the five most disappointing teams. Before we begin though, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to stay notified for future uploads. Up first, we have Drexel. The Drexel Dragons are 5-11, and, and they returned virtually all of their central players from last year's 25-win squad that could have qualified for the NCAA tournament. Many believe that they were ready to run to the tournament as a risky out for anybody who landed them there. With their poor start, which landed a non-conference defeat to Illinois State and Ryder, the Dragons' best opportunity to end their 16-year tournament drought is to win the Colonial Athletic Association Championship. That is still not out of the question. The CAA is relatively weak this season, but something has to happen significantly and immediately. On the plus side, they don't have to complete with VCU. With defeats to Towson, Northeastern, and JMU, the Dragons are now 1-3 in league play. Up next, we have Florida State University. The Florida State Seminoles, at 10-6, lost a few important players from last year's ACC Championship squad, but they immediately replenished and reloaded. The Seminoles started this season with great hopes, focused on All-American candidates Michael Snare and Ian Miller, but they stumbled right out of the gate. Losses against South Alabama and Mercer, both at home, are just unforgivable. As is their absolute lack of effort in a 25-point loss to in-state rival Florida. The ACC schedule is already in full gear, so the Noles best get their act together fast. They don't want to be one of those bubble teams in the tournament that has to explain their non-conference defeats. Up next, we have North Carolina. Say what you want about the North Carolina Tar Heels, but they aren't frightening anybody this season. In non-conference play, they were completely unimpressive. They were defeated by Butler and Indiana, both which are reasonable, and Texas, which is not. They must now contend with a difficult ACC schedule. Perhaps more concerning is the fact that North Carolina was not even competitive in any of the three games. The Tar Heels are dealing with a number of issues, including the departure of numerous key players from last year's squad. Four crucial players, including Harrison Barnes, are now on the big stage. And there is a lack of depth. A road victory over Florida State last weekend will undoubtedly claim some anxieties in Chapel Hill. Still, consistency would be crucial with a week off followed by games against Maryland, Georgia Tech, and in-state for NC State. Oh, and if you're enjoying the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel below. And don't forget to click the bell icon to get up-to-date notifications. Up next, we have Kentucky. The reigning national champions are held to a higher standard than other teams, whether fail or not, even if they lose almost every player who helped them get to the NBA. Many people believe that despite their youth and inexperience, John Capillari's youthful Kentucky Wildcats would be ready to challenge for tournament gold right away. And they may still do so, but at this point they'd have to be considered a bit disappointing. Again, as long as it's used appropriately. Four of their five defeats have come against teams that are most certain to compete in March Madness, and they were competitive in every game. The setback to Texas A&M over the weekend hurt, mainly because it came on the heels of a narrower than necessary victory over Vanderbilt, but the Cats have plenty of time to get back on track. On a side note, the same A&M squad fell to Southern earlier this year. The SEC isn't very strong this year, so it's going to be one club that's going to drop off the list. Up next, and finally, we have West Virginia. With a new league and some new components, it's unsurprising that Bob Huggins' West Virginia Mountaineers struggle to adjust, but they've looked absolutely lost way too frequently this season. Losses to Duquesne and Davidson in non-conference play don't look well on their record, and they've already lost two games in new conference opponent Oklahoma. This weekend, when the Mountaineers were barely beaten at home by Kansas State, they squandered a terrific opportunity to record an upset and gain momentum. They have a challenging road game against Iowa State coming up, followed by a winnable matchup against Purdue and TCU before a severe test against Oklahoma State. The moment for Bob Huggins' team to turn things around is almost coming. So there you have it guys, did you like today's video? Let us know in the comment section down below. With this, we're going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more incredible facts. We hope to meet you guys again in the next video, and until then, adios.